What is up guys? So today we're going to be working on a flash drive. So this is a customer's drive. Um, they brought this in because the customer said that uh, they damaged it. Um, oh wow, yes I see. So as you can see, here is the head of the flash drive and this is completely missing from the body. <laughs> so this is the normal flash drive. Uh, typically where the customer would plug this in uh, to you know the computer and you can see the head is completely ripped off of it which causes the customer to not be able to get the data from this drive. So what we've got to do is actually solder this back on to here. Um, I'm going to switch to the scope so we can see it a little bit better. You know, it blows me away how often this happens. You know, I have never, I have dropped a screen and cracked it, or dropped my phone and cracked it before. I've damaged a laptop. I mean, I've damaged a lot of things like most customers do, but I've never damaged a flash drive. And when these come in, you know, similar to like the HDMI ports, I always wonder, how did this happen? Because the game consoles are stationary objects, and then flash drives, I mean, you know, the only way I normally can, can understand this happens is when, you know, the customer drops the laptop uh, and, it had the, and it fell on the side that had the flash drive still plugged in. Which is could have could have been what happened here, but nonetheless, you can see the uh, rip pads on the end of the head of this flash drive. So this would normally be connected right here. You can see it's an eight gigabyte flash drive, um, and, but it's currently not. So we have to take this apart. Sometimes it can be hard to keep these flash drive the plastic part that's covering the board, which is what we're actually, uh, we need to get access to. Sometimes it can be hard to prevent damage. In this case, you can already see it's already ripped. So we're just gonna pull it out like that because um, the plastic is really irrelevant. The customer's not gonna be using this again even after we fix it. Uh, we just need to get this little tiny motherboard that you can see in here um, out so that we can get access to the data that uh, is on here by soldering the, the original head back on here. Uh, if this ever does happen to you or you're watching this and it's happened to you, uh, make sure you keep the, the original component. Sometimes customers will like throw away the <laughs> flash drive head thinking that we could just source a new one for them. They're like, oh, it's damaged, let me just throw it away. But in reality, that actually causes more problems because sometimes we can't find the head that's needed. Um, it can be difficult, especially on these like really cheap flash drives, it can be difficult to source parts. Uh, and because of that, we definitely recommend keeping all of the original components. Sometimes they're glued in here, sometimes they're just really tight fit. I've had them where I've had to dremel them out. I've had them where to do all different types of creative ways to, to get this out. There we go. So just like that, now that we've got the board out, uh, this is where the customer's data is. So let me see if I can put this on the camera so you guys can see a little better. Maybe zoom in. We're gonna put this under the scope. You'll be able to see it better under the scope. So as you can see, this is an eight gigabyte drive. Uh, warranty void if removed. Yes, well, I don't think we care about the warranty in this. And honestly, that's not allowed according to the Magnus and Moss Act. Uh, you are allowed to, uh, third parties are allowed to work on uh, equipment that is made uh, by any manufacturer as long as we do not cause damage. You can look it up, Magnus and Moss Act, for those who don't know. A manufacturer cannot simply deny a warranty because someone else opened it. They have to physically cause damage. Now this one would be void, obviously, because of the damage, but the customer just needs the data back. So, these right here are the pads that are completely missing. So what we've got to do, create artificial pads for these two uh, so that we can get data off this NAND chip right here 
which is where all of the data is actually stored. You see, it looks like there was maybe a little bit of liquid or something uh, spilled on this at some point. The customer didn't mention anything about that. Without further ado, let me shut up and actually get to work. So the first thing I need to do is get some flux. That beeping noise is my soldering iron letting me know that it is hot enough to start utilizing. I do apologize for the fan. I do not solder without a fume extractor. Unfortunately, it's just loud. So it didn't look like there's any pieces of the uh, USB head here or here. Sometimes they're uh, ripped off, but the pads won't rip and like maybe a leg of the head of the USB port is stuck there. That's not the case here. Um, so we're good on those two pads. We're just going to need to reconnect them. Now these pad, we've still got a partial pad here and it looks like maybe even a partial pad there. Um, so luckily, I don't actually think we're going to have to create an artificial pad on this one uh, because we already have two. We're just going to need to reconnect it. So it looks like we are all good. We just need to connect this. All right. So what I'm going to attempt to do is rather than laying jumpers on this one because it looks like we might have such a strong connection already, I am going to attempt to just resolder it without jumpers. So in most cases, the pads are so ripped, I have to artificially create one by jumping this pin, these pins, these four pins to the pad. But I think I might be lucky enough on this one to not have to do that. Nice. So as you can see, we have good strong connections on each pin. So now, see I can pick up the entire flash drive by itself and it's now connected like it was never broken. So here's the same flash drive. As you can see, it's soldered like new again. So now what I'm going to do is let's see if I can swing this camera around. 
show you my computer. And we are going to take and plug this in. Just like that. And voila, it's working perfectly fine. So the way I know it's working is we have, this customer has actually has BitLocker on this particular flash drive. So let me go to my screen so I can show you guys this. It's down. So you can see it's plugged in there and then when I come to the desktop, uh, you can see right here on the left hand side we have the USB flash drive. I can click this which is the uh, BitLocker. If I unplug that particular flash drive you'll notice that it disappears and when I plug it right back in it's there. So now all I need to do is get the BitLocker information from this particular customer uh, so that I can test and make sure all of her data is, is still there and it's not corrupted or anything. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, so as you can see, down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, the flash drive is plugged in. This is the one we worked on. Uh, and I'm going to blur out on the screen the customer's actual data, but you can see here, uh, I got the BitLocker password from the customer, and I was able to get back all of her data. Uh, so she had some pretty, really important data that I won't discuss on here that was on this flash drive, and let's just say that she is beyond ecstatic to get that data back. If your flash drive is damaged, broken, has missing components, or won't read when you plug it into the computer, our team of data recovery specialists can and will recover your data. At XI Repair, we have successfully repaired and recovered over 25,000 electronic devices. Our professional data recovery services include free diagnostics and free shipping to us. So how can I get my flash drive repaired and data recovered? It's easy. Just go to our website, xirepair.com, click on data recovery, select the type of device that you have. In this case, if it's a flash drive, like you've seen in this video, simply select flash drive. From here, you're going to click start repair and fill out the information associated with your drive. The information you provide our team will help ensure that our technicians know what happened to your flash drive, what issues is your flash driving having, and most importantly, what data needs to be recovered from your flash drive. Once done, click submit. Once you answer the intake questionnaire, you will input your information into the customer information section. This will allow our team to follow up with you during the repair process. Insert your first name, last name, email address, and the best contact phone number for you. Click Submit, and now insert your zip code. This section shows you the nearest XI Repair location and gives you the ability to mail in your device to our service center in Montgomery, Alabama. In order to get a free shipping label, simply select mail in repair, then select the store. Please note that we only have one service location for mail in repairs. Now click get a free label. In order to generate the free shipping label, input the shipping address that you will be shipping from, such as your home or office address. Lastly, click Book Repair, which will be at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. The page will reload, and you will see a Print Shipping Label button. Click Print Shipping Label, and a new tab should open with a shipping label for you to print. Simply press Control plus P on your keyboard to print directly from your computer. You can print this label from any home or office printer. Don't worry about the size, as long as UPS can scan it, it will ship. Now that you have a prepaid UPS shipping label, simply pack your device or flash drive safely into a small package or box and drop it off at your nearest UPS store or drop-off location. And that's it! XI Repair will contact you with information regarding your repair once we receive your shipment and determine what needs to be completed on it. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us at sales at xirepair.com. 
That's sales, S-A-L-E-S, at xirepair.com. Or you can contact us during our operating hours, Monday through Friday, as well as on Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at 334-777-1234. Have a wonderful day, and we look forward to servicing your device.